So my project was on the Empire State Building, the Empire State Building retrofit back in 2009. Um, so the actual project itself, uh, as many of you know, is one of the most iconic buildings in the world, located in Manhattan, um, specifically in the southern part of Midtown, um, at the corner of Fifth Avenue, right between 33rd and 34th Street. Now, the building is uh, from 1931, so actually approaching almost a century old, more like three quarters of a century, but extremely old pre-war building. Uh, it spans 2.7 million square feet. Um, and on April 5th, 2009, President Bill Clinton, Mayor Michael Bloomberg, and Anthony Malkin, the owner, um, announced the sustainable retrofit of the Empire State Building. <clears throat> so that 2009 date um, is pretty important because of some laws and mandates that came prior that we'll quickly address later on. Um, so this was absolutely a groundbreaking retrofit that would later became, become a, a case study for buildings around the world. Um, and the retrofit was just as much for tenant revival and occupancy uh, from a revenue standpoint as it was for marking an environmental action. Um, Malkin was actually quoted in a Harvard interview saying, I am a capitalist first. Um, and what he meant by that is all the sustainability and the environmental protection is great, but he still wants to make money first and foremost. So um, it was just as much of a marketing stunt as it was a cost saving stunt. <clears throat> So the goals were to, these are the main goals right here, to develop a replicable, mo replicable model for retrofitting pre-war buildings, um, develop practices to lower energy consumption up to 20%. They actually hit 38% for the Empire State Building after the retrofit, um, increase overall environmental benefits, encourage the team to be creative and proactive in its approach, develop a model that is marketable to existing and prospective tenants, as we mentioned earlier, that was a big part of it. Um, coordinate ongoing capital projects within the building, develop a financial structure that is efficient and achievable, and also achieve energy star ratings. Their goal was uh, a score of 90 in 2009, and uh, they were actually able to hit that in 2010. And they also achieved LEED gold, and these LEED certifications were all part of the um, lead for existing buildings operation and maintenance rating system. So here is the small team of big hitters. The team included um, Anthony Malkin, Malkin and Holdings, or Malkin Properties. Um, ESB Company LLC is the owner. Climate um, Clint, yeah, Clinton Climate Initiative is the project advisor. Johnson Controls is the energy service provider. JLL as the project manager and RMI as the design partner and peer reviewer. So here's a quick list of sort of the key changes, the key infrastructure changes that were done to elevate this Empire State Building to a sustainable level and achieve the green ratings. It included building window refurbishment, radiator insulation retrofit, lighting, adjustments, air handler replacements, chiller plant retrofit, whole building control system upgrade, ventilation control upgrade, and tenant energy management systems, um, which was actually a really cool revolutionary thing. Allows tenants to log online and keep track of their sustainable goals once a month to keep costs down. Um, and then here are some regulations, mandates, and rebates that really affected the uh, Empire State Building as you can see, from 2000 to 2007 to 2009, there were some some serious um, regulations and laws passed. Um, most notably, you can see in 2007, uh, the um, Dormitory Authority um, announced its commitment to register all new construction as lead silver, um, and the actual ESB project team was formed in 2008. And you can see the laws and mandates listed there. And then again in 2009, some more lead green globes, an American National Standards Institute um, for models for green buildings were um, enacted. Um, and then local law 84 in 2009 was a very big one. 
Um, it was a law passed by New York <clears throat> where all privately owned buildings over 50,000 square feet needed to measure and report on energy consumption and report by the 1st of May in every year. Um, and you can also see some of the tax abatements and tax deductions that were relevant in the retrofit. Now, risk management. Some of the main issues that arose with the Empire State Building were massive, of, massive upfront costs of the retrofit, which I'll touch on in a little bit um, on the next slide uh, with uh, life cycle cost analysis. Uh, tenant involvement post retrofit to ensure prudent, sustainable maintenance, which was able to be done by the tenant online management system, which allows, like I mentioned before, tenants to log on and keep track of their sustainable goals and make sure that they're, they're reducing their costs and hitting their targets month to month. And there was also uh, a social and marketing need to promote leasing for um, uh, the building post retrofit. So this was obviously a very expensive retrofit and uh, it was a financial risk because a big part of it was trying to get new occupancy for high occupancy with newer tenants. So the whole social and marketing part was offset by the use of Mayor Bloomberg and the climate, uh, pr former President Bill Clinton with the climate, Clinton Climate Initiative. So as I mentioned, here are is a quick life cycle cost analysis. So you can see um, the total incremental cost was 13.2 million um, with the projected capital cost equivalent to 100 and just shy under 107 million. And that it gives an estimated annual energy savings of 4.4 million. So the risk of a high upfront cost was mitigated by um, intense financial and uh, building systems analysis. And as you can see, the $4.4 million offers a three year payback um, for the incremental, or sorry, three year payback over the incremental costs. That's the average annual, average annual savings per year there, the 4.4. Um, so Malcolm Properties actually self-financed uh, the ESB retrofit, and the total cost was $550 million. And like I mentioned, the annual savings was $4.4 million. Um, so Malcolm Properties actually considered third-party financing to renovate the Empire State Building, but ultimately decided to self-finance. And uh, Malcolm and his team also knew what many do not. A market was emerging for financial capital improvements based on the cash flows from reduced energy costs. Developing a solid business case like they did in the ESB project for these financing avenues requires a robust analytical process that produces valid data on retrofit costs and energy cost reductions. Uh, reconversion and portfolio management. So uh, the Empire State Realty Trust was formed in 2013 after the Empire State Building was uh, sort of retrofit was completed. Um, and the Realty Trust has 20 buildings in total, and 14 office buildings live up to a minimum of 15 out of 20 energy efficient targets, including what you see listed below. And the Empire State Building was an extremely sort of groundbreaking uh, project for this because every single office building that was um, so retrofitted after in this Empire State Realty Trust uh, was modeled after the Empire State Building retrofit. So. The uh, ESP paved the, a great way for a sustainable portfolio for the future. And my closing thoughts, um, as I mentioned, uh, the Empire State Building was uh, a huge, huge, um, on a global scale, green project that paved the way for other buildings, um, commercial and other around the world. Um, one of the first mega retrofits in New York City after the sustainability laws were enacted in 2007, 2008, 2009, um, all of the sustainability targets were hit. And it is uh, a model example for team assembly, kickoff meetings, and projections based on heavy analytics. Um, so not only did it pave the way for other buildings and encourage them to um, be sustainable in their design, but it also provided a great model for others to follow. Thank you.